Hello everyone and welcome to this week's adventure through Pappy Van Winkle. This is something we weren't planning, but nonetheless we're taking advantage of all of it because to do this entire range of whiskey isn't something that comes across and we're able to do every day or probably ever again. So today we're starting out with a 10 year old, but before that we're just going to do a little bit of backstory as to what it is. Um, I think a lot of people just know this brand now for having huge dollar and pound price tags and not much else. So. Julian Van Winkle, who's also known as Pappy, he's the man who's kind of pictured with his huge cigar on the 15, 20 and 23 year old. Uh, he started off as a salesman in 1893 with William LaRue Weller, selling whiskey door to door for his company. Years and years passed, we get to 1933, post prohibition. Uh, Julian has enough money now to buy the Stitzel and the Weller distilleries and form them together, arguably creating what was the greatest American whiskey distillery of all time, until it later closed, but we'll talk about that in a bit. He does quite successful for a number of years. 1965 pops in, uh, in which case he sadly passes away. Um, and at this point, it's worth mentioning that Pappy and uh, they've never had a master distiller. They or they never have been master distillers. They've always hired someone else to do it for them. So currently, it's Harlan Wheatley at Buffalo Trace, who's got 16, 17 years worth of experience behind his belt. Previous to that, the guy had 40 years experience. Before that, the guy at Buffalo Trace had 50 years experience. So they all know what they're doing. Um, 1970s kicks in and we've got onto the second generation of the Van Winkle family. Um, unfortunately, in 1977, things went from bad to worse. In 1972, uh, Norton Simon, who were just a very large conglomerate company, bought the rights to the entire name brand. Uh, the Van Winkle family didn't want to sell, but nonetheless, they were forced to. They only kept two brand names out of it. I believe one of them was the Rip Van Winkle label, which is why it's slightly different. And the other one was Rebel Yell. So most of you know that whiskey that came around in the 1950s as a result of uh, Van Winkle experimenting with other wheated recipes. We skip all the way forward to around 1977. It's when the 10 year old launches. It becomes a very popular style. Uh, it is a 54.50 years, 53.5% at 107 proof. So it's quite high for a basic 10 year old. And you think about most of the bourbon brands, they kind of top out around 10 years old. It's only things like Sazerac 18, Eagle Rare 17, Eagle Rare 10. Buff, uh, bullet 10 now that kind of come to mind when you think of older bourbon styles. So yeah, this launch is 1977. Um, no one buys it. No one's particularly interested. It just kind of sits there and, you know, the, the Van Winkle family sat in a lake of whiskey that no one's particularly wanting to buy. A couple of loyal customers are buying cases in Germany and Australia, but beyond that, it's just kind of building and building stock. Um, 1992 rolls around and Diageo, the, the biggest drinks company in the world, they decide to close the Stitzel Weller distillery for reasons that are still unknown to this day. And currently it's just sat there, rusting, wearing away, covered in bird excrement. I was gonna say a different word then, but it's covered in uh, just fecal matter from all different animals. Uh, and then it took another 10 years up until June 2002 when Mark Brown, who's the CEO of Buffalo Trace and Sazerac, their parent company, he comes in, offer the, offers Preston Van Winkle's father, Preston Van Winkle's the fourth generation um, Van Winkle, who's kind of running everything now offers his dad an opportunity to co-merge with Buffalo Trace. And currently the 10, 12 and 15 year old are all Buffalo Trace distillate. The 20 year old is from an intermediate stage when they were using Bernheim Wheated Distillery, which I believe is owned by Heaven Hill. And the 23 year old, if it's bottled 2016 or before, should still be original Stitzel Weller distiller, uh, distillate. So we've got quite an interesting collection of things to talk through. Um, but today we're gonna cover the 10 and what it is. So recipe wise, it's a wheated bourbon, much like Maker's Mark, much like Bernheim, replaces wheat, uh, but wheat replaces rye. So we've got no kind of big over the top spiciness with it. The only basic spiciness we should get should be from the higher ABV because it is 53.5% alcohol, which is pretty high for a 10 year old. So we'll jump straight into the nose. We'll tell you what we get. Now, one of the first videos we did when we started shooting at the whiskey jar, was the William LaRue Weller 12 year old video. I think it was the first video we ever shot and it was shot just over there on that chair. Um, very similar distillate styles. A lot of people call Weller just Pappy but in a different bottle. Um, but I now think Weller 12 is more difficult to get hold of than most like the basic 12 or 10 Van Winkle ranges. Very similar notes to that. We're talking cocoa powder, very citric, green apples, lemon, all those kind of things. I know that the Van Winkle family's preferred serve with this whiskey uh, is a tumbler, a double shot of this, ice, a dash of water, and then a squeeze of lemon. So at some point I might try that if I get the opportunity to. But yeah, cocoa powder, loads of fresh citrus. 
and you really do get that kind of warmth and creaminess from the corn. It's a very, obviously it smells a little bit like caramel due to the virgin oak, but it's a very, very warm, welcoming style. It's not very punchy. Um, I don't find a particularly potent alcohol off the nose at all, which is very, very welcoming. Enough of that. Let's try it and see what all the fuss is about. Great whiskey. Um, really citric again. It's got like really fizzy lime. It's looking lemon in there too. And then that wheated style, it's sweet, but it's not sugary. So towards the back, you do get that really big warmth of like cocoa powder. Um, I always describe wheated berm as when you get like hot chocolate powder and you mix it with warm water, that kind of powdery, slightly artificial smell, but that's really enjoyable too, because everyone likes chocolate. It does taste a little bit like that. Got quite a lot going on. The alcohol gets you a little bit towards the end. That was the second taste. The first taste, it should be a little bit more intense, but it felt a bit more vivid on the second. But still a nice bit of balance. There is heat, but it's manageable. It's welcoming. And I think if you're drinking a 10 year old bourbon at 53%, you should expect a little bit of kind of liveliness from a bit of spice. The finish is really creamy. And it tastes like cream corn. I know we have a lot of people who watch in America, so obviously you guys know what that tastes like. I have tried it. Um, and it, there's a specific dessert called like the, um, baked corn. That's a big thing in America. You take cream corn, you put it in a baking tin and bake it. You get this weird kind of crust on top of it. it tastes a little bit like that. Really rich. I suppose our equivalent in England is like rice pudding. It tastes a little bit like that. Really full bodied. All in all, a great style. Um, typically, our, our views on this channel are matched with price. <coughs> Currently, Buffalo Trace and High Spirits, who distribute them in the UK, they're trying to solve the crazy secondary market prices with Van Winkle. Um, so I know recommended retail price for this should be, I think, about $60 and about the same in pounds. Um, for 60 quid, I'd happily buy that all day. It's a lovely, lovely whiskey. So in terms of scoring it, I think altogether, we're probably going to give that, like, so like eight and a half, it's not quite a nine, it's very, very good, but I think it does beat a lot of its competitors from Burnham and Makers with ease. I think there's much more going on with that, much more history to it as well. That's no offense to the other brands, so just, you know, it's Pappy Van Winkle. Um, so yeah, that's our score, eight and a half out of 10. That's the 10 year old, and we'll be doing the entire series, so keep your eyes peeled to this, and in the description box below, uh, a couple of months ago, Whiskey Jar held an interview with Preston Van Winkle, which was filmed here, and I'll link that below. It's just under two hours long, and it's a full kind of talk down of every single bottle and all of its history, personal views, family views, historical views. Um, so if you're interested in the whole range, it's worth watching that too. So I'm Phil, this is the Whiskey Jar. That's Rip Van Winkle 10 year old, and that is an eight and a half out of 10. Cheers guys, thank you. <laughs>